presenting Linux KVM. Hi folks, this is Ramsey Southern Navarro. This is a presentation that I gave at the Flux Florida Linux Users Exchange on April 12, 2012 at the Southeastern, at the uh, Nova Southeastern University. Okay, uh, let's start the presentation. What is Linux KVM? Linux KVM stands for Kernel Based Virtual Machine. It's a hardware assisted fully virtualized solution for Linux its virtualization using the native Linux kernel. It runs multiple major guest operating systems simultaneously. Guests have private virtualized hardware, NIC, storage, memory, video. It supports native hardware extensions with the Intel PT or AMD V technology. Uh, Linux KVM, uh, let's continue. It supports para-virtualization drivers called Virt IO, Virtual IO, which make your uh, your network and your storage uh, native in speed. It runs multiple virtual machines using unmodified Linux or Windows images. It also runs B, uh, BSD uh, and many other types of uh, OSs. It has excellent hypervisor virtualization and emulation. And emulation. It is integrated in the, all the new native Linux kernels instead of a separate microkernel. When did this happen? Uh, it began with kernel 2.6.20 on April 2007. So it's the new kit on the block compared to, uh, to the other ones. It had a slow takeoff, but now it's in a very stable and mature state, and it's gaining rapid adoption. Why is, K uh, why is Linux KVM significant? Well, it competes with major proprietary solutions such as VMware and Zen. It has record-breaking performance. It outperforms competition in many benchmarks. You can uh, you can Google them. It is uh, it has superior scalability above uh, some competing solutions. Uh, it has the unique advanced application security using SE Linux. It's the only one doing that right now. It has a high quality of service, fine-grained threshold policies using uh, kernel, parameter, uh, kernel parameters, uh, kernel di dynamic parameters. It has a lower cost uh, with up to 80% deployment savings. It has excellent te technical documentation. It's open source and non-proprietary. Uh, many partners provide paid support. I'll be showing you that shortly. It is uh, KVM is integrated in all the new Linux kernels. It is uh, it has a very simple installation, nothing special. Um, it's very useful for cloud computing. It's very good quality, fast, cheap, and flexible. It's likely to play a huge role in the next generation data centers. It may be the hypervisor of choice in the long term. No prohibitive licensing fees, and it's gaining ample recognition. Who's involved? And who supports it? Well, there's a group called Open Virtualization Alliance. Uh, and it's made up of IBM, HP, Intel, Red Hat, and Suzy. Basically, the biggest uh, Linux, uh, the, ba the biggest companies using Linux now. You can go to openvirtualizationalliance.org and find out more. Red Hat, and Red Hat uh, has just created a new, in 2011, created a new department called RHEV. It stands for Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization. They fully support KVM. They even dropped Zen from their uh, from their latest distribution, and now they only support KVM. And uh, they they also uh, have paid paid uh, paid support for those that are serious about uh, installing KVM in an enterprise environment. Suzy Enterprise Linux also supports it, and Ubuntu Server. How is it being used? Well, the same as VMware or Zen. It's good for small to medium enterprise solutions, but it's also being used in uh, OpenStack right now. Um, it's great for cloud computing, it's great for ISP hosting, and excellent for development and testing. Uh, the, here's a history timeline of uh, virtualization. Uh, virtualization began in the late 1960s with IBM um, and it ran for, for many, many years until the 1980s when the PC, the client server, and distributed computing was the trend. So for like 20 years, 
there was no virtualization anywhere because people wanted the PC client server architecture. And then in the late 90s, VMware came out with their VMware technical patent. And uh, shortly after that, they created VMware ESX. Then came out less than two years after. And, uh, and then all, uh, there were a bunch of other emulators and um, that came out after between the beginning of the year 2000 and late mid to late 2000. Kimu played a very important role in, um, in visualization. Uh, Linux KVM came out in 2007 and then in 2007 also Zen and ZenSource forked. How do you install Linux KVM? Well, there's lots of examples, lots of Google, exam Google examples. I use Debian 64-bit, but you can use any major distro. You need to enable virtualization in your BIOS before you can begin. Uh, you can verify if your BIOS has support for virtualization by running this command here. And if you get VMX, that means you have Intel virtualization. If you get SVM, that means you have AMD virtual virtualization. Um, Verify that your host is 64-bit, is running a 64-bit OS. And then Debbie and I stop and I disable uh, Net Manager, Network Manager, because uh, you need to run a static IP on your host. Okay, configure your host static networking settings. Uh, make sure you use a host bridge. Don't use Wi-Fi. Uh, basically, do an app get install bridge utils, and then modify your uh, network interface configuration file. Notice here I'm, uh, I'm, I'm setting up Ethernet 0 as manual and then my bridge to take over my, my Ethernet card. You'll need a bridge if you want to have your guests share the same subnet as your host. Otherwise, your guests will, be, will use NAT. Um, make sure your resolve, your, uh, your domain resolvers are defined. Restart your networking and then you'll see that. Uh, your bridge takes over your Ethernet card and it actually has the IP address that you specified, a static IP address. Disable net filter processing in the bridge traffic by running this command here for the kernel parameters. Otherwise your IP tables will, will process the communication that goes between your, your network card and your guests. Uh, here if you run BCR, BRCTL, you'll, it'll show your bridge your bridge and your, and your Ethernet card. You can have many Ethernet cards also on your host and many bridges. Install KVM with AppKit install KVM and Vert Manager. Configure which KVM module you're going to load. You can load the KVM Intel or KVM AMD. You can do it with my probe. Uh, enable the uh, libvert uh, daemon in the background. Start it. And then uh, you're ready to go. The last thing you need to do is add yourself, your account to the libvirt group so you can run the virtual manager with your own account. Okay, uh, here's a window, here's an example of the uh, vert manager. You get a window like this, and here are my guests. I'm running Debian Oracle Slackware, Windows 2008 XP guests. You can create a new guest right here. You can pause it, you can shut it down, etc. It's very easy to use. Here's a uh, guest running. Uh, it's running Windows XP. You, in the details button, you can specify details like you know which CD-ROM ISO image you want to use and memory, how much memory you want to sign in, and so on. And you can pause it and shut it down here as well. And you can also use a command line interface. You can run virg connect uh, uh, virtual shell, and you can list all the uh, all the guests that you're running. Here I'm running uh, Windows XP guests. And I have another guest it's called Debian One, which is shut off. You can gracefully shut off your guest by typing "shut down" in your guest name, and it, sh it gracefully shuts it down. And then you can start it again. And you can do it anything here. You can configure anything that you can do with your uh, graphical user interface. You can do here. It's really neat because you can script a lot of it. Okay, uh, I recommend that you visit these uh, these uh, pages here so you can get more information about. Uh, Linux KVM. The last thing I want to show you is uh, my actual uh, vert manager. Um, here it is. These are I'm running f six guests right now. They're all consuming five gigs of memory, 
and I only have 8 gigs on my machine so if I type free you'll see that uh, all those five are only consuming 3.7 gigs so it does have excellent memory management uh, here I'm running uh, Debian uh, running Oracle with 2 gigs uh, another Debian guest running X Windows here's another Debian 64-bit uh, guest Uh, what else am I running here? I'm running uh, FreeBSD. Uh, I'm also running a Windows 2008 server. Uh, it has one gig of memory. Uh, here we can do a uh, temp key, control delete, and then log in. Let me see. There it goes. And I'm also running a Windows XP guest. And there's my Windows 2008 guest. So as you can see, I'm running six guests. Uh, they're really fast. Uh, they don't consume a lot of memory. Uh, I highly recommend that you uh, use uh, Linux KVM. Um, the only other compatible competitors are Zen and VMware, of course. Nothing else is better than it. Uh, here's a uh, my vert manager, as you can see, the uh, the graph here, is sh the graphs are showing the CPU usage, which is really neat. And uh, lastly, uh, last, I'm going to show you a video of uh, of an actual install that I did. Actual Debian install. There it is. Uh, basically, let me start it again. Oops. Well, here's here's a. Uh, I'm just I just want to demonstrate to you quickly an install I did in Debian, so you can see get get a feel for it. Uh, basically, I start my Vert Manager, and there it goes. I'm gonna create. What I like to do first is create my uh, my storage, my my image. Uh, I create my own personal KVM file system directory in data KVM and then I assign a new volume I like to use the QCOW2 format which compresses your image has excellent compression uh, I'm going to give it 10 gigs of RAM I mean 10 gigs of storage there it is Debian 1 IMG I close this I close that screen and then I create my new my new guest I'm going to name it Debian 1 and import, import the image that I just created Specify that it's a Linux Debian install. That's important. 500 megs of RAM. I'm going to click on uh, Customize Configuration. In the Advanced option, you'll see the bridge used as the host device. And here, basically, you can you can add your CD-ROM ISO image that you use for the install. You can uh, add, uh, reduce uh, memory or um, or increase it. I like to I like to always, always remove my my sound emulator because I really don't need it. And I, uh, here I'm adding the uh, the ISO for uh, for Debian. There it goes, and then it'll appear as your CD-ROM drive. Next, I'm going to select to boot from CD-ROM, and there I go. There it goes. There's the install. I'm just quickly skipping through it because I don't want to take up too much time, but. Uh, Bing bang boom, Debian install. I'm sure some of you have uh, gone through this. Some of the Debian lovers like me. And here it's going to be reboot at the end. Reboot. Come on. And there it goes. And basically, that's what it looks like. This is what the window looks like for, uh, for your virtual manager in Linux KVM. And there it is. I'm going to log in. And run X window, X windows. So basically, this is what you'll expect to see when you start running K, uh, Linux KVM. Uh, this is the end of the presentation. Thank you for watching, and enjoy your Linux KVM experience. There's a lot of documentation out there. Uh, thank you for watching, folks.